Well, good evening. It's good to have you on, uh, see you tonight. Well, don't actually see you, but I know that there are those that will be coming on if they're not on right now. And then as we go ahead and we'll have this on Facebook, it will, it, of course, will, will, will be saved on Facebook and also will be later put on YouTube and Rumble. We're getting the good word of the Lord out. This is lesson number one in our brand new quarterly. And the this is this unit that we're studying now is called Advent. And this at this Christmas season, which is uh, we can focus on what we call the Advent. So we're looking forward to this lesson that's been so uh, good to study about the Lord and how you know we we look forward to to Christmas. We understand about Christmas, about the Messiah and all. But these people, it wasn't that uh, wasn't that easy for them to accept. But we're going to start at. In fact, uh, there's not any way we could go and read each of these of these uh, scriptures that it gives with our lesson, but I do want to say that, that we, we're going to have less. Go to start in Genesis. Imagine that. Yes. And the Savior's coming foretold, so you have to build up to that. So it'd be, we'll be studying from Genesis, Isaiah, Luke, John, and Acts. So we're thankful that we have a good writer in this lesson that leads us through this central truth. The prophets foretold the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, Savior. That is our lesson title is The Savior's Coming Foretold. Okay, again, the central truth, the prophets foretold the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, Savior. Our key verse is from Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. My many times. We have quoted that. We love that scripture. In our learning objectives tonight, we will be able to list several Old Testament prophecies concerning Jesus' coming. We will be able to explain how Jesus fulfilled many Old Testament prophecies. We will commit to telling others about Jesus. All right, the first four lessons in this quarter, uh, we'll be focusing on Christ's birth. And people also, as we said, often refer to this as Advent. It's important to study about the Lord's birth to understand significance in our life. My, we certainly know that has changed our lives. I, I just uh, I was listening today something about the importance of talking about your your uh, your testimony of how you found the Lord and all. And I think my how how great you know I've told mine so many times. I thought people have heard it again and again. They don't they don't want to hear it probably again. But you know there's something about it when that experience when you found the Lord as your Savior. Of course we grew up. I grew up in church and like many here in America and. So I don't have a, a problem accepting Jesus as the Christ. But these people, it was hard for them when they had had all of the animal sacrifices. And now to put their faith and trust in, in Jesus Christ was, was difficult for some of them. But many did grasp hold of this. And my, the miracles that Jesus did and the love, the compassion that he showed had such an impact on these people. He always went about doing good. I like that Jesus didn't sulk and pout. He wasn't moody. He was, he was even killed. And he spoke, always spoke truth. He always did good. He was always a great example. In Romans chapter 5, uh, verses 12 through 21, that's when Paul explained how that Adam brought sin into the world and with it death and con condemnation to all. You know, we, we hate to see this, how that in the beginning everything was so perfect. And here it wasn't long back that we studied in, in Genesis and, and we talked about that, how everything was perfect. And there was just one thing, you know, they had to do was make sure that you didn't eat of this. Uh, there was one tree you didn't eat of, the others that you could. And then here comes along Satan. We're going to talk about that in our lesson here. Did have to, because people maybe wonder, well, how did we get here? There, not everybody that uh, comes across these uh, these programs on uh, these videos that we that we go ahead and put them out on YouTube. That is, I put those out on my personal channel, Karen Clymer, and that is C L Y M E R. And also, I go ahead and put them on, on Rumble. We don't know who all is seeing and where uh, the people are coming from, different walks of life. And we just pray and believe the Lord to touch their hearts that they will know that Jesus is the Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There's not, there's not all kinds of ways. There's this way. All right, so God's creation was good. And the Lord declared that it was not just good, it was very good. And sin, however, would soon was mar the creation. And you know, Satan came in the form of a serpent and he placed doubt in Eve's mind concerning his word, what God had said. That Well, he didn't really mean that. And I thought uh, that word uh, 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 obfuscate, it just describes Satan, obfuscate. 
he is, he obscures or dims things. It's not he's not that he doesn't tell it like it really is. He makes it appear a way that it is not. And this is what uh, is how that Eve was deceived, and then Adam also he fell in sin too. And and this writer said it's possible that Adam was saw was maybe maybe wasn't right there, but he was close enough, and and he just didn't intervene. We don't know that. So, but I just know that they both ate of the fruit that they were not that of the, it was a forbidden fruit. And they partook of that. And you know what? It wasn't what Satan had told them. He told them, oh, he said, you're, you're going to be like God. You're, you're going to know everything just like him. It wasn't that way. All of a sudden, they recognized things were so different. And one of the main things that they happened, they knew this. They, they were not in fellowship with the Lord. It was an awful thing for these people that day. When they were out of touch with God, they were separated from him. We know how that they ran in the head hid themselves, and the Lord, when he would come, just to think the joy of that, when he would come to visit them, and, and the, maybe perhaps in the cool of the evening, we know at least sometimes that's when he would come, and how that they would probably run to meet him, so glad to see him, and no telling what they, the things they had to tell him, maybe things they had discovered or whatever, I don't know, but it was a happy time, but now this time, they did not come, they went and hid themselves, they knew they had done wrong. They were separated from God. But the thing of it was that, the, that our Heavenly Father was determined to make a way to, that, he, that we could be restored, that, we could come, that they could, there could be the fellowship again. And the Apostle John wrote that we are tempted by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He, he tempts us the same way that he did Adam and Eve. The craving for physical pleasure and the pride of, of being their own gods, that drew them away to think, oh, they could be like God. But that was Satan always uh, obfuscates. He always presents it in a dimmer view than it is. That what I think about how our, our, our Heavenly Father, you know, the, what He has in mind for us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what they have in mind for us is all those things that are good, that, that will bless and will encourage and help. It's always reaching out to others and ministering to them. It's being like God. Where Satan in the in, is the opposite what he has in mind as as to, as to deceive and to destroy to steal to kill and that that's what he wants to do he deceives people and we're so thankful that we have a choice i'm so thankful that it's not it's not like well whatever your family chooses if if they vote or what i'm glad it's not like that but it's individual there's an individual thing that we get to choose Antonio, glad to see you on, and probably Isabella is there too. Bless you tonight. All right, we're going to talk about now. So first, in part one, we need a Savior. By all means, we need a Savior because sin has entered in. There we have a redemptive promise. There are consequences for, for sin. One of those consequences that our writer brings out is that God punished Adam and Eve for the sin. But I tell you what, he didn't stop there. The first one he punished was the serpent for what he had done. God was merciful. He would provide a, a redemption plan. We are so grateful that he did that. And I'm, because I'm a partaker of that. Anybody that's accepted the Lord Jesus as their Savior have asked him to come into their life and cleanse him from their sins. We have that Savior. And it's hard not to tell, give, give my testimony again. But I, I won't bore people with it. But I'm so thankful that I understood, you know, the plan of salvation enough. I knew I needed a Savior. What I like is that the Lord brings conviction and it may feel miserable at the time, but it's what draws us to the Lord that we recognize I'm lost. But let me just talk about the, the uh, Satan here, or, or Lucifer, or what happened to him. Here came this serpent, and here he was, and well, if he's supposed to understood that he may walked, he was walking upright, but he didn't now. As he, I mean, he was, he was put down. He was put down when he was crawling. He was crawling, as we might say, he was eating, eating dust. He was crawling on his belly. Probably, our writer here says it probably indicates the non-threatening status of Satan uh, under God's judgment on him. He had him down. I mean, he had him down. Can you imagine? Uh, imagine crawling where he had been upright and he had been just walking around, and, and there he could do whatever he wanted to do, pretty much uh, do whatever. But now he's deceived. Uh, he's he's deceived uh, Eve, and now Adam they have fallen. And so, and the Lord wasn't going to let him by with that because of his righteousness. Look, neither could he let Adam and Eve by with what they had done. It, now, I'm thankful that he didn't he didn't strike them dead. 
but he began to talk and to begin to work with them and gave them a plan, the plan that was going for them. You know, there was going to be the time it came that there was the animal sacrifices and all, but even now we won't go into all of that. But he told them exactly they knew what they needed to do. Adam failed in his relationship with God, our writer mentions here, but the seed of the woman of Christ will defeat Satan and provide salvation for all humanity. It's from Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 and 15. Christ's defeat of Satan also gives us the power to live victoriously for the Lord. This is a wonderful promise. Yes, it is. That we as children of the one true God, we can stand faithfully. We can walk in faith and victory in everyday situations. I don't care what it is. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus and the, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, that Trinity, they love us and they watch and care for us in every situation. God promised this Savior during Isaiah's time as God's prophet, the southern nation of Judah was in a difficult con uh, conflict. And I was reading up on this and said that at Aram, uh, this was the... Uh, that this was the country where that this man had, uh, he was a, a reason, and Israel, Pekah was over Israel, and then Ahaz was over Judah, and they were trying to get Ahaz to go ahead and work with them, and he wouldn't, and there was other things that, but that he wouldn't do. He didn't, wouldn't really, uh, he, he wouldn't ask for a sign. And so here, here's what the, the Lord gave a sign: the prophecy of the future confirmation that the sovereign that the sovereign God would provide the final ruler on David's throne. What they were trying to do was to get uh, Ahaz to come away uh, with them and be with them and all. And so they would leave. Uh, Ahaz refused to ask for a sign, but mentioned how that it was, what it was going to do, this break for him. If he had gone ahead and gone with them, it would break the covenant that God had made with David. And, you know, this was good. There would always be somebody um, from David's family would be on the throne. And this is what happened. That's who Jesus came through. So we're so thankful that this happened. Well, Matthew realized the importance of this prophecy concerning Jesus' birth. God's presence had come to his people through his son, Jesus. Now, you know, this was, for, for the Jews, they, they had read the Old Testament. Of course, that's all they had was the law. And they had read that, and they understood it. It was clear to them. And this is why uh, that you find that the uh, the apostles, they would go to the Jews first. They had a much better understanding than, than, than the Gentiles, you know, because they hadn't, many of them had not really read the law like these, like these people had. But it was peace to individuals that would, that would accept this wonderful Savior, the mighty God. It mentions here, the phrase, the government will be on his shoulders, points to his kingship. Wonderful, describes his supernatural wonder. Counselor shows his God-given wisdom. Mighty God shows that he is God by nature. Everlasting Father shows that he is eternal as Prince of Peace. He will bring peace, salvation, wholeness, and well-being for all. That is so good. Yes, it is true. Now, I think people will say sometime, well, what is the Prince of Peace? Where's peace? They'll talk about there is no peace in our world. And yes, there is many. there are many things that are horrible. Yes, there's all kinds of, of criminal activities. There's an in nation against nation. Yes, we understand that. But here's what we have here. We have individuals can have peace. Uh, I just read something today that my cousin, who is a missionary, I read something he had said about a this a young woman. She was... Uh, I think she was only about 20, and her husband had had been martyred. And how that he, she was here, it turned out, I think she didn't even know how to read in this country that she was in. It was very sad condition. But how the joy of the Lord filled her soul. And she said, just to think, she said, just to think that I was married to a husband, that that he literally was a martyr. He was so strong in the Lord that he gave his life for the Lord and said, here, I can't even read. And she was left almost, I guess, in you would think a terrible situation, but she was rejoicing that she was married to a man like that. And she wanted to be faithful like that. It just, uh, it just, it just touched us. I think we have it so easy in many ways and to think what others are, are living in. It's, but, they're, but the peace that the Lord had given this woman and her husband as, and she even had, had a picture some way as they was taking him away, was able to get a picture. And there he was strong in the Lord. He was as he was being led away. John the Baptist had this, an announcement is fulfilled in John chapter 1 and for, verses 45 through 49. John the Baptist had pointed to Jesus being the Lamb of God. 
who takes away the sin of the world, those who heard Jesus also recognized that there was something special about him. In fact, the scripture will say sometimes that they would say they marveled at the gracious words that proceeded from him. He wasn't ranting and raving and roaring out at them and cursing and swearing at them. He wasn't doing that. He, 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 he was, but there was, I think of just have the kindness that he had, but yet he, he was not a wimp. But here he was, he was, they recognized, they did recognize there's something different about this man. He's just not an ordinary man. And others would say, well, is this not Joseph the carpenter's son? Well, Joseph actually did raise him. He was more like a foster dad. So thankful for this mother and father that loved the Lord so much and they realized this was a special child because they had had this angelic beings had, had told him this and they were prepared. And I think what wonderful parents that he had here of these, we want to call them, like in one case as far as the, the dad being a foster dad. But here, how's it, how did the Lord led them and directed them how excited they were and how they did the right things and raised this. What was it like raising this child? Also, John the Baptist, you know, how raising a, a man like this, and here he's pointing to Christ as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it talked, we said, we don't know a whole lot about Philip in the Bible, but Jesus took the initiative to call him to be his disciple. And uh, I, I was reading about uh, this and how that Philip, you know, that he was the one that he went and he, he got uh, Nathaniel. And, you know, there are some people that you don't hear a lot about, but it's who they brought to the Lord sometime, that they would really become really leaders in the church. But everybody had their place. You know, there are some people who are very good at drawing people in. There are other people that are gifted at teaching and training. And, you know, the, the Lord has gifted each of us for whatever it, ha it is that he wants us to do. Now, but he wanted Nathaniel to meet and hear Jesus. That's what Philip wanted to meet. Well, why would you want to do that? I want you to meet him. And I read up on this, and the, the thing that uh, Nathaniel, he just he wasn't maybe too excited to go. And all, but when he didn't really know that Jesus was the Christ, he was the Messiah, this was, this was a big thing to accept Jesus as the Messiah. Was he really? It was, you wanted to make sure... You were sure that you were sure that you were sure that it was him. And Jesus was full, was fulfilling many Old Testament prophecies. And these people knew the Old Testament. So he was fulfilling these prophecies. But it was an amazing thing when Jesus spoke to Nathaniel. And and, his, and how the, he said, when Philip had said, come and see, come and see. And before Nathaniel met Jesus, he knew that Jesus, he knew, he knew Nathaniel's character. And he said it was, he was a man of complete integrity. And indicates there was nothing deceitful about him. He, this was an honest man. What a wonderful person that he was. And then he surprised Nathaniel when he told him that uh, that he revealed him where he'd, he'd seen him even sitting under under the fig tree. And uh, the writer of, of our quarterly here believes that this could be that Nathaniel was spending time in prayer and meditation. It might have been what he was doing at this time. It was a good example for us that we, we need to be meditating on the scriptures. If, if you do not read it, I, and I, I I believe, and I know Antonio and Isabella read, read the Bible every day, but there are some people who have not made that a daily thing. Don't do it. Don't don't go. Let a day go by that you don't read the Word of God and pray and, and, and talk to the Lord. Today I received a phone call while I was in my prayer room, and so I, but, but it was a, it was actually a, re, a victory report uh, about a person that we'd been praying for, and so it was good. to sometimes it comes in, and you know you're you're trying to do two things at one. You're trying to pray, you're listening. I was on the phone talking to that and, and looking at my prayer uh, prayer list, and two at the same time. But I just thought about the goodness of God, and here was my a person, a cousin, was calling. We're talking about we was talking the victory and what the things that the Lord had done, how He met needs, and it's good to meditate on the Lord. You know, these people, they want to do uh, some things, some types of meditation and, and all, and, and I'm leery of some, some of those things. And I thought, there's nothing like meditating on the Lord and reading about Him and study, and just what He's done for us and just and begin to reflect on that and begin to call out to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time and that time that you need to just begin to name the things that you've done. But mainly, thank you, Lord, for saving me and cleansing me. I'm thankful that He was the Messiah that he was the Messiah, and he met all of the criteria that in the, the scriptures here. And they would look, and this is what these, uh, here, here was Jesus, and they was explained, and here was the, the, the prophets had written these things that the Lord had given to them. They didn't understand it. Hundreds of years went past, and now here it has actually happened. And I think, here we are, and all these, and was it 
over 2,000 years later, and, and you know, the rapture still has not taken place, and people still have opportunity to repent. Praise the Lord for that. The Messianic prophecies fulfilled. This is part three in our lesson. The predicted death. Now, the disciples have been with Jesus for three years, but they had not fully grasped some of the things he taught them. He did tell them he was going to be leading, going to be going away. But I really think it almost just went right over their heads because they just wanted victory over the Romans. That's what they were thinking about the now, you know, like they say, the nasty now and now. What they were enduring under these people, they wanted deliverance. They didn't want to live under this. But Jesus was thinking, telling them so much more. It was greater. He was talking about when complete, final victory. You know, there wouldn't be all of this. There wouldn't be any wars anymore. That time is coming. That, that's maybe a long time off, but yet, because we think about the millennial reign and things like this and all. But I'm telling you, the great thing is, one day, I don't know when, but the main thing is that we're ready to meet the Lord. You know, I always like to ask about people when I find out, a person has passed away, and if I if I know the person real real well, their family, I like to ask them what was their last day like, and what 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 did they do, especially as a child of God, you know, had they if they had been ill, uh, or if they hadn't been, you know, what was the day like? What was, and I just I just am interested to know if I know them well enough, I will ask those questions, and you know, I remember hearing about one man that. He was a preacher, and they said over and again in his message on, I believe it was a Sunday he was preaching, over and again he would say, if this is the last message I ever preach, and he would say, Go talk about that, well, they found him dead. No, he didn't commit suicide, but the Lord took him home. You, you wonder if he sensed it and knew that he was possibly, uh, time was running out, and he was really not, not that old of a man. But the thing is to be ready when any time and to know that we've done what God wanted us to do on this earth. I'm talking about from young to old, right? It doesn't matter whatever the age is. To know that we have obeyed the Lord, that our life has been an example of a believer in words and deeds. We have no idea the people that we touch. Oftentimes people will say, me, I'm just a nothing. I can't. No. We are children of the one true God and our life can be a shining example let your light so shine before men that they may see your, your good works and therefore glorify God. They don't glorify us, but glorify God. Our lives should point to Jesus. The disciples have been with Jesus for three years. They really hadn't really got it yet. But Jesus mentioned his coming death again because he wanted to prepare them. He recognized his time was running out on earth. And he wanted to get that information to them lodged in their in their heart and in their mind. He wanted them to understand that his death was fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. You know, it, it, that's what the, the Lord was so gracious. Our Jesus was wanting to let them know, prepare them. It wasn't like what they were looking for. This was going to be far greater when our sins could be forever washed away. They were on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, and the Passover would be so different this time because Jesus recognized this was the last one. This and now he had been there for three years. They'd been with him, and they'd uh, celebrated the Passover. This was going to be the last one they were going to be doing together, and he would fulfill the Old Testament prophecies concerning his death and res resurrection. Jesus did not specifically mention the prophecies he was going to fulfill. So, a writer was, was tells us here the disciples probably knew many of these prophecies. They probably knew them by heart. They could quote them. But the details, they did not know all how exactly. You know, that's the thing. We don't know every single detail. But Jesus tells us in his word, the prophets, prophets had spoken what the Lord had given to them. You know, they didn't, they didn't see the time. Uh, they, as I, I've seen, heard it explained, that they saw it from like mountaintop to mountaintop. They didn't see the valleys below. They didn't know all the details in between. And they didn't know the time. They had no idea. They didn't know that. But they... They were prophesying what they saw, and I'm thankful that they did. And the Romans were known for their cruelty, especially the crucifixion. And Jesus knew he was going to be crucified. He was going to die a horrible death. It was painful. It was humiliating. He would suffer pain and humiliation for the salvation of all who would put their trust in him. Put their trust in him. Never, never fall back. Jesus' death, though, was not the end. It was only the beginning. He would rise from the dead. Praise the Lord. He would rise from the dead. His death and resurrection provides the hope of salvation and eternal life for all who believe. So death was just the beginning. 
You know, I'm so thankful that he rose again. I, I have, I had a, a my, my husband and I traveled in full-time child evangelism. Uh, we, this was back in the day before you had the, 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 the cell phones and all of this and you, the video, we had uh, film strips and things like that. But I remember telling a story one time that we had, we had, you know, the, we would flip, it was like flip charts and we was telling the story and, and this actually happened in India. Uh, of how that I believe it was in India, but in a country where they they believed that their uh, their guru would rise from the dead, and it was if they went out into the middle of this certain river, and if they if they said something, it, it was the same incantation for like one thousand times, and so and said then he would rise from the dead. Well, this young man went out and he did that. He 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 kept track. He was he was marking down each time he said that phrase, whatever it was. And every time, and well, then he at the end of one thousand times, he, well, his guru did did not rise. He was heartbroken, and he asked one of the others, "Why did he not rise?" Well, it's because said you probably missed one. You went over or you went under. Well, what a tragic thing when, you know, we don't have to go through things like this. But the good news was proclaimed after this because there was. You know, uh, Paul and, and Silas, Paul and Barnabas, and there was, and those people, some, and some of the apostles, they did, they did stay true. We know that we had the one, Judas was unfaithful, but I'm thankful that the word they did when they got hold of this and recognized, you know, when Jesus did appear after he had died, he rose again at, and from the dead, and then he did appear to them, and they, then, then they caught on. Then they, they began, they caught on, they began to realize. Then Jesus told him he would be going away, and he did. So what did they do? They took hold of that, and they began to preach the gospel everywhere. And the, and the Holy Spirit directed, so thankful for the Holy Spirit, he began to direct the church at Antioch by word of the Holy Spirit, send Barnabas and Paul on a missionary journey. And here they went from Paphos. They traveled north to Pamphylia, landing at the port of Persia. They then traveled 100 miles north to Antioch of Pisidia in present-day Turkey. Imagine that. There they would, would explain how some Old Testament prophecies concerning Jesus. They talk about that. Let the people know the truth. So this, it was their custom. They went to the synagogue and they spoke the truth to the Jews who had a knowledge and they knew about the Old Testament. They had a background to help them to understand this. And here would, here would be uh, these uh, fellows there that would be Paul and Barnabas. They would be linking it up to show that, okay, here's what the Old Testament prophecy now. Look at all these things that show you know Jesus is the Messiah. Put your faith, uh, your full faith, trust, and confidence in Him. Synagogue rulers often allowed visiting rabbis to act, to, to address those uh, those present. So I, I just believe that Paul and and, and uh, Barnabas they was ready for that. It was yes, yes, we're ready. We're, we're hoping that they probably did want to get acquainted, uh, you know, with the synagogue rulers and and let them know that they love love to speak. And and what an opportunity it was that they had. You know, they knew Jesus and, and how that these they was able to visit and talk to those people about the Lord. And it, it was a great thing how Paul would give them a brief history of the nation of Israel and the coming of the one who descended from David. God had fulfilled that promise. And so these people had said, they let them know, this is the good news. This is the good news. To prove that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise, in verses 33 and 37, Paul quoted three prophecies. The first was from Psalm 2 and 7, and I'll read them here. You are my son, today I have become your father. This day I have begotten thee. And the word begotten, it, it uh, normally refers to, to physical birth. So in this uh, context, so it refers to the enthronement of the king. Jesus is the son of King David and the son of God, the Messiah. All right, God has established him on the throne of who but David, just what he said. And secondly, Paul quoted Isaiah 55, 3, I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. He said, then we go on to where God promised that David's throne would last forever. God has fulfilled this promise through Jesus, whom he raised from the dead. They could just go back and link it up and show them. You don't have to doubt. You don't have to wonder about it. There is no doubt. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of, the Son of God. Paul's third quotation is from Psalm 16.10. You will not allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. This psalm could not refer to David. It had to, because David, like his ancestors, they would die and they, they would their bodies would, would decay. But not this one. So it was talking about someone beyond David. It was talking about the Son of God. 
All right, so Paul summed up his message about Jesus. Through Jesus, we have forgiveness of sins. There's nothing like having your sins forgiven and being put in fellowship with the Lord. You don't have to hang your head. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder. You don't have to live in dread and fear. But just come to the Lord and forgiveness comes. Forgiveness comes. That we're in right standing with the Lord and that we can communicate with Him. And I mean daily in prayer and all throughout the day, there's nothing like it. I, I Just yesterday we had a situation come up and uh, unexpected and here we were uh, needing, uh, needing help. And what we just... Uh, you know, how, how's this going to work out? And it wasn't a horrible, horrible thing, but, but it, was, it was about our car, and uh, it had stopped and, and all this, but we were at a good place, and we said we had a great day, so we just said, well, why, we're just going to praise the Lord and believe God to work all this out, that we can get everything taken care of and be on our way. And the Lord did work it out. It was something how that every, and, I, and we just marveled at what the, God, what, what the Lord did. Now, that could have happened here when just, what, two or three days ago or whatever, a little more than that, we had gone out of town. Could have happened. Then. Well, God, same God, he would have been there. He would have helped us. But this was just such a, just like step by step. I thought, but this is, it doesn't happen that, it's not going to be that we never go through things. The Lord, it was always going to have a tried people. And if everything was just perfect all of the time, you know what? It, it's not going to be heaven on earth. We, we wouldn't be, you know... Do, do you do you want to keep living in a world like this? I want to go be with Jesus. I want to go be with my Savior. I want to meet. I want to see God. I want to see that heavenly Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm thankful. That's what I'm looking forward to. As they say, the song, "This world is not my home." I'm just passing through. What is God saying to us? Our lesson ends up by saying this: People need a Savior because sin has destroyed their lives. They may be uh, have a lot of money. They may have a good marriage. They may have a lot of things going for them. But sin has destroyed their life. And that spiritual part, that part of us that can know the Lord, God promised to save and provide his salvation through Jesus. The marvelous thing he did was to give his son. So the Old Testament prophecies show the fact that he is the Messiah. The gospel explained how Jesus fulfilled the prophecy. And many today I know still do not believe the Bible. Sadly, they do not. But may our lives continue to be examples as we keep praying and believing. This is what we can do. We can cover them in prayer and believe the Lord absolutely everywhere you look. I, I, I just think of the, the physical body, the makeup of it. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. It is amazing. It's astonishing how, how the Lord has created us. It, it didn't, and this the Big Bang Theory that it just happened. I don't believe that any more than this watch here. My Fitbit just all of a sudden, you just threw some parts out and they come together. I don't believe that. I mean, just as I, there, there is a creator, and I'm glad I know him. I'm glad I know the one true God. Understanding how God fulfilled these uh, prophecies, and when we see it, it does increase your faith. When you look and see what God has done, what he was prophesied hundreds of years before, and then it happened. Details, details down to the, the little town. Of Bethlehem. I mean, God is so faithful. He is so good. So we can trust the Bible as God's message to all humanity, not just one part, but all humanity. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. And may the Spirit of the Lord be moving in our heart and in our life. Jesus is the only one who can bring salvation. This is the message we are to proclaim to those bound by sin. People say, can it be that simple? You just come to the Lord. You come believing. You can live for Him. Love him and trust him. Keep on living for him. So what are we going to do but put this ministry in action? And we're listed here some things that we can do. Is we can think about how this lesson has increased our faith in the Bible and in God's plan of salvation. We can plan how we can use what we learn to tell others about Jesus by all means. And we'll pray. We can pray that God will give us the opportunity to share the gospel with others this week. I think that is very important. And when we get up in the morning, we say, Good morning, Lord. I love you and I want to serve you. And whatever I do today, wherever I go, whoever I see, may they see Jesus in us. If things don't go right, may we still have patience. It means even keeled. May we have a sweet spirit and show a kindness and a love of God. Not get all out of sorts and be, you know, getting all upset and angry and shouting and all. We don't want to do that. Oh, you might shout the victory for the Lord, but we don't want to be angrily uh, condemning or criticizing but may we be those people that will be that will be like Jesus
May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow in Sunday school. If you do not have a church home at, uh, at Elgin Assembly of God, First Assembly of God, we are at 921 Third Street. Our Sunday school begins at 945. We do have classes for all ages. And also at 1045, we have our worship service. And then again at 6 o'clock tomorrow evening will be our worship service. Our pastor is Brother Larry Toma. We look forward to hearing his ministry. He always has a great message. He's been in tune with the Lord. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. We look forward to seeing if you do not have a church home, but if you do, and there's more than one church here in Elgin, but if you do not have a church home and you, you're looking for one, we'd love to have you there. So you be blessed. And until next Sunday evening, we'll see you. You be blessed and have a great, great rest of the evening. Goodbye.